Hello, Marauders. Here I am at the Rose Parade, Marauder Man. And oh, I don't want to get run over, but I was going to tell you a little bit about some review for the test. But before I do that, I also was noticing something on here. And whoop, I can't see it. Let me fix that for you. I was noticing on here, I wanted to mention this. You, you see these angles in here? Where, where are these little, I can't get the thing, these little angles here. Let me switch to something a little better here. Okay, let's go over here. And just kind of point out, you know, you only see these guys here, like radical three, you know, where, where do these come from? Like in my calculator, when I put my cast down, here's 30 degrees. When I go cosine of 30, it actually says radical three over two, the X. But most people's calculators just say that, which is a decimal, but is this just a coincidence? I don't know, where did that come from? Same here, when I put in sine, sine of 30, it says one half. And, and same with these other ones. Now, if I do something like cosine of 25, I don't get a weird decimal and I can't get a weird decimal just for 30 and 45 and 60. So where do these come from? I'm gonna tell you where these actually come from and how to memorize them. And then we'll give you some review things for the test, but it is possible to memorize these if you understand where they came from and if you see the pattern. Okay, so we got the 30 degree angle, radical three over two and one half. Where did those come from? Okay, so here's the idea. Okay, and that looks bad. Okay, we'll try this pin. Okay, so let me put in a 30 degree angle here. Okay, here's the 90 and here's 30 degrees. And of course, this, this would be 60, I, I know, but it, it says that this side, it says, X is radical three over two. That means this side is radical three over two. And it says, this is a half. So this side is a half. Because here's the point, radical three over two and one half. But where did these radicals come from? Why not decimals? And I know the radius is always one. So I was wondering like, where does that come from? And, and you know, the calculator says that. It doesn't do that if I do like cosine of 25. In fact, I can't get a radical. But, but for 30, I can. 30 gives me this radical, only 30. Well, on 45 and 60 too. So here's how this came about. So let me move this zoom out a little bit. Let me draw a perfect triangle here. I'm gonna make an equilateral triangle. So an equilateral triangle, 60, 60, and 60. All these are 60 degrees, okay? So perfect triangle. All the sides are exactly the same length. And let's make the sides Let's make them two inches all the way around, two inches, two inches, two inches, two inches. Perfect equilateral, equiangular triangle. And now I'm going to fold it right down the middle. I'm going to fold it right down the middle. And let's throw away this half. Let's just get rid of this, okay? Let's get rid of that half and just keep this half. Okay, so that's 60 degree angle. I just cut it in half, didn't I? I cut it right down the middle. So this angle here, is now 30 degrees. Because over here was the other 30, right? We cut it right down the middle. So we got 30 degrees. Here's 60. This side was two. Now, remember this side was also two, but we cut that in half. So this side is now one, isn't it? Okay, so this side is two. And this side is one. In fact, the angle opposite 30 is half of this, isn't it? This is two. This is one. So how about, hey, let's turn it like this, okay? To make it look like that other triangle. And once again, we're just gonna cover this part up. So we'll just kind of cover that up. So this side is one and that's two, that's half of it. In fact, isn't that the opposite? Let me check something out here. What's the sign of 30? Half, one over two, yeah, okay. And what's this side here? Here's the right angle. Let's do a little Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so let's see, I guess this is A and this could be B and this is C because here's the hypotenuse. That looks like the longest side. So let's go A squared, one squared plus, oh, this is a mystery, B squared equals, and this is two, two squared. Okay, so this, this squared plus this squared equals that squared. So let's see, one squared is one. Uh, I don't know what B squared is and two squared is four. Let's solve for B, move the one over like that. Okay, b squared is a four take away one because we're going to take this one off of there. And that's three. And let's take a square root. And the square root would be 
the square root of three. And let's not do the negative because this is a length, so we can't do the negative. So this side is the square root of three. Oh, wait a minute now. Isn't that the adjacent? If you look at it, let's just cover that part up. This side's radical three. Here's the 30 degree angle. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So here's your 30 degree angle. The cosine is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So the cosine of 30 degrees is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. <gasps> oh, so let's go back and do that. Cosine of 30, radical three over two. Oh, pretty cool. Radical three over two. Yeah, and I know we said two, and even though this would be one, it still works out. If we started this whole thing over, and you know we did the whole thing from the start, we made that one. When we did the whole thing again, this side would be half, and this, this side would be radical three over two. And you'd still get the same things if we cut them in half. In other words, if you cut this down to one, cut that in half, and cut this in half to radical three over two. So isn't that the X and the Y? The X and the Y, radical three over two, one over two, there they are. And likewise, I could get, if you do 60, it's the same numbers, it's just the triangles uh, the other way. Here's the 60, here's the 30, and this is the 90. So it's the same things, it just gets spun around. And I can even turn the triangle. And that's why people know things opposite 30, or half of the hypotenuse. That's why every time you do like sine of 30, you get the one half. And when you do opposite 60, you get the radical three. And the other part's the same idea when you have the 45 and you go, where do these radical twos come from? That's the same idea. I can do the 45 guy. When you do like cosine of 45, you get the radical two thing. Okay, let's start with a perfect square. Oops, this pen's given out too. There we go. Okay, there's a square. Squares are 90, aren't they? Perfect all the way around. Let's just make all the sides one. Let's go diagonal. So if you cut it in half and throw this away, this would be 45 and this would be 45. So what's this side over here? It's more than one, isn't it? Okay, let's do Pythagorean theorem. One squared plus one squared equals, let's see, one plus one is two, the square root of two. So now if you do a little like cosine of 45, remember, here's your angle, there's your 45. Isn't the cosine the adjacent over the hypotenuse? So if you go cosine 45 and go adjacent one over radical two. Oh, all these pins are given out here. One over radical two, yeah, that's what this is. Of course, wait a minute, what's one over radical two? Move that to the top. Radical two, cross that up two. Remember, radical two over two is the same as one over two. And I got another dead pin. One over radical two, you know, if you go like that, radical two, radical two, you get radical two, and two and two becomes two. That's the same thing. And that's a dead pin. I can't believe this. These are all dying pins. Yeah, so that's where these all come from. And like the other day, I showed you that little uh, shortcut to fill them in. And I mentioned if you wanted a quick way to try to memorize them, if you're wondering about, uh, let's put that up there if you're wondering, how do you, how do you memorize that little pattern? There's a pattern in these, if you're wondering like a little pattern, let me put this right up here for you. There's a little pattern. Remember this starts at zero. In fact, let's just, here's one zero. And here's the most popular angle I put in. Zero, 30, 45, 60, and 90. There's the popular ones. And so, in fact, this is the first point, right? One zero, right? There's the point one comma zero. And in fact, let me just take, put the zero there. There's a pattern, just go like this. One, two, three, as you go up, 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 four. And you go, wait, what do you mean that's the pattern? Okay, we'll go like this square root of one, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four. This could even be the square root of zero. And you go, okay, where are you getting at? Okay, watch this. Just put a two underneath all of them. Over two, over two, over two, over two, over two. That's the same numbers on the worksheet. And you, what, do you, what do you mean? Well, what, whoops, here we go. 
what's zero over two? Well, that's still zero, isn't it? Okay, so we'll just change that guy to zero. And this one, what's the square root of one? Well, one, the square root of one is one, one over two. How about the next one? Oh, radical two over two. What about the next one? Radical three over two. And then last one, you go, wait a minute. I thought this was a zero one up here. It is. What's the square root of four? Two over two, what's two over two? One. So there's this pattern that goes up. If you look at the sheet, it's like square root of one, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four, all over two. And so I'll just go back to the, the pattern here. Uh, let's go back to this and this. And so you can actually memorize this. If you were like having to do some like SAT or something, you need to know this. See, see here's one zero, right? So it goes zero, one, two, three, and of course this is a square root of four, but they're all over two. This one doesn't matter, over two, over two, over two, over two. And the other ones go backwards. See, here's one, and you count your way down. Three, of course this is four, square root of four, three, two, one, zero. And then you work your way back up. Like if I'm at the X's, one, two, three, four, three, two, one, two, one, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. There's a pattern. Okay, and what you're more interested for is maybe a little quick review for the test to give you some hints on some questions that are on the test. Okay, so here's a little reminder question. Maybe I'll give you a point and it says list the six trig functions. Sometimes I'll even tell you what quadrant it is, what quadrant means. So I'll start like that and go, okay, where would negative three, four be? Okay, negative three, four. Okay, let's see, negative three would be this way and down four, that would be down here. So I guess I'm in, uh, I guess I'm over here. I'm in quadrant three, aren't I? Because if this is the point negative three, four, I would be here and here. Look at there I am. And I can finish the triangle, a three, four, oh, three, four, five. I can do Pythagorean theorem. And then from there, there's my angle. I could just start filling in my fractions, couldn't I? Let's, let's try some numbers maybe a little trickier. Okay, what if I gave you this clue? The secant is 2 over 9. Hang on, let me fix that. That's impossible. Let's say the secant is 9 over 2. Okay, there we go. Secant's 9 over 2, and then I go, oh, I'm going to tell you in quadrant 4. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, we're over here. So we'll draw a triangle. So we go from the middle, Somewhere here, where do we draw? This way? This No way, where do we go? We go back to the axis, make a little angle there, draw like that. And so the angle we're always talking about to right here. There's my angle. And let's put some numbers in. Secant, oh man, that's confusing, secant. Let me think about secant. Secant, oh, secant's like cosine. And we gotta flip it over then, don't we? Cosine would be this guy upside down, two over nine. Okay, so now we'll fill these in. Cosine, okay, cosine is the adjacent. Because here's my angle, right? There's my angle right in there. There's my angle. So cosine must be two over the hypotenuse. So now I gotta fill the rest in. Okay, because remember we're in quadrant four. Okay, so I got two and nine. And see, uh, what's over here? Um, oh, Pythagorean theorem. And notice that's a short piece, isn't it? So two squared plus the mystery part here and whatever you want to call it. So we have two squared plus something squared is nine squared. I'll make that two a little better. So sorry, two squared. Okay, and this is my mystery, right? So let's see, four plus something squared is 81. Make a little room. Uh, y squared 81 take away four is 77. So the square root is the square root of 77. Okay, it's got a little weird one. Okay, so there we go. Square root of 77. And now I gotta think about, wait, is anybody here supposed to be negative? This guy's downward, isn't it? So let's put a negative on him. So we'll clean this guy up a little bit. Negative radical 77. Okay, so now we got our three pieces. We got two, we got that, and we got that. And does this one, one want me to do them all? No, it says, uh, why don't you just tell me the tangent? Oh, the tangent, let's see. Okay, so here's my angle. Remember, I'm always in the middle, right? That's where the angles are, because that's where we spin, right? We spin. 
So there's my angle. So let's see, the tangent is the opposite. Woo! Negative radical 77 over the adjacent, which is two. And there we go. Okay, so there it is. And by the way, could you tell me that angle? What is that angle? And that's where I got to get a calculator out. And I'm going to put in, well, how do you put this in? Let's see. Oh, I know. We don't know the angle, right? So we're going to go second tangent. And then we'll put that in. And it's okay if you don't put in the negative part. You'll still get it. Okay, so I'm going to put that up here. Uh, let's switch this over here. Try to get this over here. Try to get that to switch. Okay, here we go. So I would go, here's my calculator, second, tangent, and we had uh, radical 77, move that over here, divided by two, and I get uh, 77 degrees, and you go, wait a minute, that's just the, that's the reference angle there, okay, 77. If you said, wait a minute, do I have to put the negative in? It's okay right now, we'll, we'll deal with that. Um, later, it says negative 77, and you go, wait a minute, so wait, which one is it? That's kind of funny, that's the same. Let's go back to our screen here. Okay, well, this angle is a 77 degree angle in here. Okay, I'll put a little eraser there so you can see it. That is a 77 degree angle, okay? Of course, why did it say negative? Well, because it's kind of downward, isn't it? But if you're just looking at this little triangle by itself, it's 77 degrees away. But if you wanted to go 360 minus 77, you can figure out exactly what it is all the way around. So sometimes you have to think about it. But yeah, we'll just call it a 77 degree angle in there. And here's another little test question. What is the reference angle for the, each one of these? We'll make three little questions. And once again, when I see these, I kind of go 340, the reference angle, let's see, 340. All the way around. Oh, I'm almost to 360, right? I'm spinning all the way around. I don't have my little spin thing, but if I went all the way around, 340 is like really far, right? About right there. There's 340. Remember, the reference angle just means how far are you away from the x-axis? And you're like, well, I'm about 20 degrees left, right? So if you made a little triangle, he's a 20. He's a 20 degree little triangle in there, right? So if you made a little triangle in there, He'd be a little 20 degree angle. Sorry, you can't see it there, but that'd be a 20. If you did 100 degrees, and you're like, once again, here's my circle. Let's see, 100 degrees. Keep going, keep going, keep, uh, about right there, because here's 90. So 100's right there. Now, where do you draw the triangle? Once again, you got to get the x axis. Let's go straight down. Ah, oh, we're right here. In fact, I'm not close to this, am I? But I'm kind of closer to 180 now, right? I'm almost to 180. In fact, I'm 80 degrees away. So right in here, if you drew that guy, you know, 100 somewhere in here. Here's 180. This angle right in here is 80 degrees. Okay, you're 80 degrees away. It's a little hard to see that. Make them a little bigger. Okay, so if you went all the way over here to 100, and you drew it down here, you've got about 80 more degrees to go to get 180, so it's an 80 degree angle. And lastly, 3 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 is right here, it's 135, isn't it? That means I've got mm, 45 left, 45 to go. What is 45? Pi over 4. So I could say I have pi over 4 to go. You could also say like this, let's see. How far, let's see, here's 180. Let's see, 180 is actually pi. And here's three pi over four. How far is it from three pi to pi? Um, well, if I had three fourths of a pi, how much more pi do I need to eat to eat the whole pi? I'm a fourth of pi away, aren't I? If I had three fourths of a pi, let's eat another fourth of a pi to get there. Pi over four is your angle. That's the reference angle. Okay, maybe the last review question. Let's say an angle is 3 pi over 2. What do you know about it? Where's 3 pi over 2? Let's see, here's 0. Here's pi. This must be half of pi, right? Half of pi, a full pi. Isn't, isn't it, could I also call that 2 pi over 2? Isn't that a full pi? Yeah, okay. 
one, two, I guess over here is three pi over two. I guess this must be four pi over two. Oh, which is two pi. Of course I could have, sometimes I could just look it up. Oh, duh, there it is, three pi over two. Uh, so what do you notice about that? It's straight down, isn't it? If I said, hey, what's the sign right there? You know, like the sign, uh, well, what's this point? Well, that point on graph paper, if I'm like, you know, like this, that point down here is, it's not left or right, it's zero, but it's down, it's zero, negative one. And of course, here's the cosine, the cosine of that angle, the cosine of three pi over two is zero, the sine is negative one. What's the tangent? The tangent is the y over x, which would be negative one over zero. Wait a minute. <laughs> That's an error, isn't it? <laughs> Let's see what happens. Let's go uh, cosine of, the, and isn't that 270? Isn't that 270 degrees? Let me type that in, it's easier. Cosine of 270 is zero. Yeah, that's the cosine the x. The sine of 270 is negative one. Uh-huh, that's the y. And the tangent of 270 is error. Oh. Right? There you go. That's an error, isn't it? Could you do cotangent? The cotangents, this flipped over, zero over negative one. Oh, that would actually be zero, isn't it? Yeah, that one works. But I don't think I could do the flip now in my calculator because it's already stuck in error mode. Okay. Okay, so that's the review for the test. Everything else, I'm gonna let you kind of figure the other things out and uh, you know try to do your own thinking to get through the rest of the test. And that's it. Good luck, guys. Mm -hmm.